here is one example of an alternating series. You see the trends over here, the size alternate. Positive, negative, positive, negative, then continue in this pattern. Sometimes it can start with negative and then alternate to positive, except and go on. So if the side alternate, then this kind of series is called an alternating series. Now, this is just one example. So if B1 minus B2 plus B3, et cetera, you see the sign here alternate, and then all those Bn over here uh, are positive. If you consider, ignore the sign of every chain, just take the absolute value of every chain. Those will be the B1, B2, B3, et cetera. So we can write this alternating series in this sigma notation. So first, let's take care of the alternating side. So the alternating side will be negative one to the either n or n minus n power. So that will take care of the alternating side. Now we can think about the absolute value of every turn. Those will be bn, b1, b2, b3, etc. Those are the absolute, those are always positive. Those are the absolute value of every turn. Or think about every turn, drop the sign. So that will be bn. Now the bn here will always be positive. Now you might ask, should I put negative one to the n or negative one to the n minus one over here? That take care of the alternating sign. Well, it depends on you start with positive or negative. Suppose you start with positive. Okay, suppose the first one is positive, like this one. Then if I put negative one, okay, so I will put down negative one. And if I put the index of the first chain, which is one, that will be one. Uh, should I put n or n minus one? So you can actually test it out. So if I put n, if I put n there, when n equal to one, the result here is going to be negative one to the first power is negative one. Then the first term will be negative, but this is not negative. So definitely not negative one to the n. But then the other one is going to work. So negative one to the n minus one or n plus one is going to work because when n equal to one, this one here will become negative one to the zero power, negative one to the zero power. So that is going to be positive one. A non-zero non number raised to zero power is always equal to one, remember, okay? So in this case, for this series over here, you should put negative one to the n minus one power for that one. But if you have another alternating series that start with a negative trend, suppose this is like negative one, positive one half, etc. Then you'll put negative one to the end. Okay. So you just need to test it out. Now, in any case, if I have an alternating series, something like this, if this alternating series satisfy two hypotheses, two condition, then we can conclude that alternating series, something like that, is going to be converging. Uh, the book gives the uh, two con uh, hypotheses, but I actually change the order of that and, and make it easier for you because uh, you see why the order I pick is easier. The first one we check is going to check if the BN go to zero or not. So that's the first one to check. So we want to check if, if the BN go to zero or not. So think about every chain, if you drop the sign, would that go to zero? Now think about this one also, right? Now, if I drop the sign, one, one half, one third, one four, one fifth, does the B N go to zero? Does it go to zero? Is it getting smaller and smaller and closer and closer to zero? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Okay, good. So that's a very easy check to see if the trend go to zero or not. So that's why I put it as the first condition to check. And there's also a good reason if this condition doesn't satisfy, 
then you can actually have a conclusion already and you will see how that goes. Okay, I'm going to explain in more detail. So that's why I want to check this condition first. The book do it the other way, but I'm going to check this condition first. Okay, I think other book probably also do it this way. Okay, now the second condition we check is going to be this condition. It's going to be Bn plus 1 less than equal to Bn for all n. What does it mean? That means the Bn is going to be getting smaller or sometimes equal. So think about the Bn. So you have maybe B1, B2. So B1 and B2 could be the same, but then eventually drop and then drop and drop. So the equal sign here means sometimes they could equal, but then has to be less than equal to this. So Bn is actually non-increasing. It's going to either decrease or sometimes equal. So Bn is going to be like this. Think about um, the trend right here is like it go down or sometimes level, uh, non-increasing. Now, if this alternating series satisfy this two condition, then we can conclude that alternating series converge. There is proof for this. However, I'm going to try to show you the idea of the proof by this picture over here. Okay. Do you guys play uh, ping pong or tennis? I remember someone said we play ping pong, right? I remember first year class, someone said that. Uh, if you play ping pong or tennis, then you think about the ball go back and forth. Okay, back and forth. So remember, you have an alternating series, like, like something like this. Then what does it mean the series converge? What does it mean they sum up to a finite number? That means the, the n parcel sum is going to go to a finite number. Okay. So if you take the sum of the first n chain and then that n goes to infinity, it's going to go to a finite number, a finite fixed number. Okay. So let's see the parcel sum, the n parcel sum. So let's first take the first parcel sum, which is just have one chain. Take one chain right here, B1. So suppose B1 here is positive, okay? So B1, so start from the origin, start from this origin, then you're going to go to the positive direction, B1, okay? And then you're going to start here. And this is the sum of the first chain, right? So that is S1. So that's the first parcel sum. Now let's think about, let's now, let's take two chain. Take the second parcel sum which means you sum the first two chain up. Well, you B1 is right here. Now you subtract B2. When you subtract B2, you are going to go backward because B2 is positive, right? So you're going to go backward, go the other direction. And you're not going to go beyond this. Why? How come you're not going to go beyond that? You're going to stop somewhere be before you reach this the beginning of that because because what condition guarantee that it's going to stop before you reach the starting because start. it has to be less than or equal to b one yes. yes we got it because this second uh second condition right because b2 is less than or equal to b1 so when b2 is less than or equal b1 so the magnitude of this it's going to be smaller than the magnitude of this. So when you go backward, it's not going to go beyond that one. It's going to stop before. The magnitude is going to be non-increasing. So that is smaller than that. So you're going to stop here. So this is B1 minus B2. So you have S2 over here. Now you add one more turn, add B3. B3 is positive. So you go back to the positive direction this way. And you're not going to go beyond the this one. You're going to stop somewhere before you reach this. So you stop here. And you have B1 minus B2 plus B3. So that's S3. This is the sum of the first three chains. 
And then you continue in this pattern. So minus B4, plus B5, <laughs> and then every time is going to go like bounce back and forth, but never go beyond the, the boundary of the, the, the one before. Okay. So if you pay, um, ping pong or you, you remember those things that you put a coin in, right? And then you're going to drop and then drop and drop and drop. Eventually it's going to drop and drop to this single number. Okay. We go back and forth, back and forth, but then left every time it's going to go, uh, restrict it and closing and never go beyond the boundary of before, right? So it go, so eventually it's going to drop and convert to a, a number, not necessarily in the middle of this right here. It could go like this and then you can drop, 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 drop over here. But it's going to drop to a number. We go back and forth like this. So that's the idea behind the proof for this alternating series test. So BN is going to go to zero. And then the BN here is going to be non-increasing. The magnitude of that is less than or equal to the, the one before that. Then guarantee that this, the M partial sum is going to drop to a finite number. And that finite number is the, the sum of the series. So when you sum up all of them, it's going to be equal to whatever number that this one is. So kind of interesting. Now, some of you might say, might feel that, well, wouldn't that be enough if B and go to zero? How come you need this one? Uh, I actually have an example for you, but I'm going to put that on canvas so you can take a look. So you can come up with uh, quite a lot of counter example. You can have B and go to zero, but this doesn't satisfy. And then this, the alternating series either converge or diverge. You can have example for both. Sometimes converge, sometimes diverge. If this second one doesn't uh, satisfy. Okay. So, so pay attention. You need both condition in order for this alternating series test to work. Um, we have a brief way this alternating series test as AST. Okay. So alternating series test. Okay. Let's look at one example. Now, first of all, I'm going to ask you guys, the, this series here is the series one over n. It's a harmonic series and it diverges, right? It diverges to infinity. Remember we, that was the famous harmonic series. It diverges to infinity. Think about first day you say one dollar, second day you say one half dollar, and then keep on saving. And if you live forever, then you have infinite money. <laughs> I found the money. Okay. But no one is going to leave that long. So, um, so that's the harmonic series. Okay. So, so even though each one here gets smaller and smaller, but still sum up to infinity. So that is kind of interesting, the harmonic series, but we actually prove it. But now we have this alternating harmonic series. So basically I take this series and I'm going to make the sign alternate. So positive, negative, positive, negative. So, if I write it in sigma notation, I will have the sigma uh, one over n. But then because of alternating sign right here, so I put negative one to the n minus one because the first term is positive. So I put n minus one right here. So this is the alternating harmonic series. What do you think about this series over here? Right? Let's use the alternating series test to test this out and see if this series here sum up to a finite number. What do you think? Okay, let's check this out. What's the first condition that you want to check when you need to check? Does B n go to zero? Yeah, the B n go to zero. So we're going to let this part here, right? Let this part without this alternating sign here be B n. And then um, let, let that be B n. And we're going to check if this one go to zero, which is uh, easy check. Does it go to zero? What do you think? Yes. Yes. One over n as n go to infinity, it does go to zero. So check. Okay. What's the second condition to check? Bn plus one is less than or equal to Bn. Yes, you got it. Okay. Like this. Okay. Now, this is also easy check. What's the reason? 
because the bigger the denominator, the smaller this quotient, right? Both have the same denominator one. When you increase the denominator, then this is smaller because n, n is greater than equal to one. Okay. So then these two are easy check. So check and check. Okay. Now by the alternating series test, what can we conclude about this alternating harmonic series? Converges. Converges. Yes. Good. Okay. Good. So, so we will say that the series converge because it satisfies the two conditions by the alternating series test. The series converge. Okay. Good job. Now, what do we have learned from this? Notice that the harmonic series, harmonic series converge or diverge, it diverges, right? It actually diverges to infinity. However, if you make the train alternate, the alternate harmonic series actually converges. We just prove it using alternating series test. So pay attention. Harmonic series diverges. Alternate harmonic series actually converges by alternating series test. Now, this is the first we mark, first observation. And another observation we can make is this. Well, if we worked well for this one over n, how about we work for one over n to the p power? We know that we know this, this one right here. This is the p series, right? And uh, when will the p series converge? Do you guys remember? It converge even only if what? If P is greater than one. Yeah, if P is greater than one, right? Okay, so that's for P here. Okay. Now, what happens if I make it alternate? Okay, if I put the alternating sign here in front, then by the alternating series test, by similar reasoning, the one over n to the P will also go to zero as n goes to infinity. And if you put this to the m to the p power, one over n plus one to the p power, and it should be less than or equal to one over n to the p power. Okay, it's a similar reasoning because the denominator will be bigger than the reciprocal will be smaller, right? So by similar reasoning, we can conclude that alternating p series converge or diverge. For any, any alternating P series. And you, you, did you just say it converges? Yeah. It, it converges by the same reasoning. Okay. You just put that to the P power, to the P power over here and here. Okay. And it's going to check out this two condition. So it satisfies this two condition. So it should be converges by the alternating series test. So for any, Alternating P series. But then, um, but for P series, uh, it converges if and only P greater than one. However, if you put the alternating side, all of them are going to be converging. Okay. So that's something interesting that we, we observe. Okay. Okay. Let's check the other, another series over here. This one over here, I say it is an alternating series. Because you actually need to check this. Sometimes it might not. Okay. How can I tell the series as an alternating series? In other words, then you will have a part that is always positive. And then you have this part here will be the alternating sign. Oh, so you will have the sign alternate and then um, part of it is always positive by then. Okay. Okay. So looks like this part here is always positive for all in. Because n is one, two, three, four, etc. This is always possible. This is the alternating side part. So this indeed is an alternating series. So if you are asked to find if this series converge or diverge, then you will let you think about the alternating series test, right? Because you're given an alternating series. So of course it come to mind say, hmm. Maybe I should use the alternating series test. Okay. So, so to use the test, we're going to let B n to be this, the part that always stay positive or think about this the absolute value of the turn. So we have that. Okay. I'm going to ask you as n go to infinity, what does this goes to? 
zero. Are you sure it's zero? Let's think again. Oh, no. <laughs> Three over four. Three over four. You got it. Okay. Remember I told you guys the trick? Um, I think the 11.1 that you look at the, the dominating trend. So the dominating chain here up here is 3n, down here is 4n. As n goes to infinity, this is going to behave very similar to 3n over 4n, which is going to 3 over 4. So it's going to go to, it's going to go to 3 over 4, which is not zero. So it doesn't satisfy the first condition of the alternating series test. Then what can we say about this series? What can we say about this series? Well, um, the series indeed is going to be divergent, divergent, but the reason that it's divergent is not because of alternating series test. Uh, do you guys remember the test for divergent? Or, or some of you might learn that from high school. It's called the M turn test. So if you have a series, so say A1, A2, and the A3, et cetera, AN. So if you sum up the turn, A1 plus A2 plus dot, 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 plus AN plus dot, 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 okay? Then what happened over here is you look at the M turn. So this is the M turn. And you want to see if it go to zero or not. If it doesn't go to zero, if it doesn't go to zero, then that series is going to be divergent. So that's why I call it entering test. So you want to see the behavior of the entering. If it doesn't go to zero, then the whole series diverge. Uh, you can also think about this way. Suppose this one doesn't go to zero, right? Maybe go to um, let's just say it go to one half. Then, then from some index on, the turn is going to be very close to one half. And if you keep on adding one half, certainly it go to infinity, right? It's not going to be converging. And uh, if a and say go to negative one half, then for some index on, every turn is going to be very close to negative one half. And if you keep on adding negative one half, it go to negative infinity. So it's not converging. And sometimes if an goes, sometimes go to positive one, sometimes go to negative one, positive negative one, then the, the positive sum is actually going to jump around. And then it doesn't go to a fixed number. So if the m chain doesn't go to zero, then guarantee that the, the series over here is going to be divergent. Okay, so that was the entrance test or called test for divergent. So you just look at the entrance. Now, this one over here is almost the entrance, right? The entrance of this is actually this one, the BN. This is the BN together with the alternating sign. So let's think about AN. The AN of this series is the alternating sign and times this bn right there. Now, if this bn here go to 3, 4, and then together with the alternating sign, then the even chain go to positive 3, 4, and the odd chain go to negative 3, 4. But in any case, it certainly doesn't go to zero, right? So it's not going to go to zero. An alternating side times this is not going to go to zero. So a n doesn't go to zero. When the a n doesn't go to zero, we can say that the series diverge by T F D, which is called test for divergent, or you can say M chain test. So that's the reason I was asking you to check this condition first. Check if the b n go to zero or not. So. Number one is because it's easy to check to see if it go to zero or not. Number two is because if it doesn't go to zero, then the AN doesn't go to zero. And then you can conclude right away the series diverge by the test for diverging, by the entrance test.
Okay, so that's the reason we want to check this one first. This is easier to check than the second one. And it's more uh, productive if we do it this way. Okay, so you can conclude the series diverge. But remember, the reason it diverge is not by alternating series tests, it's by the test for diversion. Okay, so that's a little bit tricky. Okay, so it's by test for diversion. This series here diverge. Okay, so if this, the first condition doesn't satisfy, we can say that the series diverge by test for diversion. Okay, let's do another example. Uh, any question here so far? I want to hear from you if you have question. Do you have question? No yet? questions yet. No question yet? Okay, feel free to jump in if you have question. Let's look at the second example here. Again, this is an alternating series. Uh, why? Because this part here is always positive and this part here is the alternating side. So we'll think about to test this series using alternating series tests. Number one, we're going to check if Bn go to zero or not. Okay. So Bn is equal to what? This one, right? That one. So Bn equal to that. Now I'm going to ask you, as n go to infinity, what does this go to? What does this one go to? Look at the dominating trick. Zero? Yeah. So because n square over n q, right? So if you have n square over n q, that is one over n. As the n go to infinity, it go to zero. So it does go to zero. Okay. So it's satisfied by the first condition. So let's go ahead and check the second one. So that was a, that's an easy condition to check. Okay. Let's check the second one. How can I prove bn plus one less than equal bn for all n? You can try to prove it using algebra. You can try to prove using algebra. Try to prove if you substitute n plus one into the n, Replace the n here by n plus one. That's b n plus one. And then compare that with b n. Would this be less than equal to this? You can put this using algebra. Another way to do that is you can use calculus to show that b n plus one less than equal b n. You can try to show the relating function is actually going down. It's decreasing. One, one to infinity. If it's decreasing, then those are the special value, right? Those are special value for the function when the x is equal to n, n plus 1. Then if the function is always decreasing, then the series will be always decreasing also. So that's the idea. So we want to show that the relating function is decreasing, then this sequence bn uh, will be Decreasing. To show a function is decreasing, we will show the first derivative is negative. So we take the first derivative of this function. What kind of root do we need to use to differentiate this? The quotient root. Using the quotient root, differentiate x squared, we get 2x. Now we multiply by x cubed plus 1. Subtracting this x squared, times the duality of x cubed plus 1, which is 3x squared, and then over the square of this denominator. Now, after you simplify this, we end up with this quotient, that is the first duality of the relating function. Now, we want to see the critical numbers. A critical number is going to be the number in the domain, such that either the duality equal to zero or does not exist. Now, this expression will be equal to zero when x equal to zero and q root of two. So x equal to zero or this equal to zero. The only way to have this equal to zero is the top, the numerator equal to zero. The numerator here has two vectors. The first vector is x. So x equal to zero, or this vector, two minus x q equal to zero. When two minus x q equal to zero, x equal to q root of two. 
Now over here, I cross out the zero here because when we talk about this relating function, because the index for the sequence start from one. So we only consider x greater than or equal to one. So we're going to cross out the zero. Other critical number we can get is by looking at this versatility and see when will this be undefined. This is undefined when the denominator equals zero, which is when x equal to negative one. Again, x has to be greater than equal to one, so we cause this negative one out. Therefore, from one to infinity, the only critical number we get is q root of 2, which is a little bit larger than 1. So, and we look at the sign for the first over t, when x is greater than this number, then 2 minus xq will be negative. And notice that all others here will be positive. So the sign for the first over t will be negative. When x is less than this number, this part here will be positive. This is positive, this is positive. So first of all, it will be positive. When first of all, it is positive, the function is increasing. When first of all, it is negative, function is decreasing. So the function is increased before this number, decrease after this number. And this means that bn is going to be decreasing for n greater than this number. So when n equal to 2, 3, 4, etc., then the bn will be always decreasing. For the alternating series test, we can actually modify that. When the sequence is decreasing automatically, then we can still apply the alternating series test and conclude that the child of the series will be convergent. And remember, when the child of the series converge, then the whole series converge. So by the modified version of the alternating series test, this series over here converge because it satisfies the two conditions. The first condition is bn goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Second one is bn plus 1 less than or equal bn eventually. Here, actually, you can say eventually. So this alternating series converge by alternating series test. Let's summarize this. If you see an alternating series, uh, you see there's an alternating sign here, and this part here is always positive then that would suggest that maybe we can use the alternating series test. To use the test, we first check if bn, which is this part right here, does it go to zero as n goes to infinity? Now, if this is not satisfied, which means bn doesn't go to zero, then the whole series will be divergent. The reason for divergent is actually by test for divergent. Because when bn doesn't go to zero, then an, which is the alternating side together with bn, will not go to zero either. Therefore, when the train doesn't go to zero, the whole series diverge, which is the test for diverging, or we call that the n trains test. So that's why we want to check this condition first. If it's not satisfied, then this alternating series diverge by test for divergence. The second condition we check is bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn eventually, which means uh, ultimately, which means that after some index on, this is satisfied always after some index on. Now, if this is obvious, then that's good because a lot of time you see that the denominator increase and the numerator stay the same so it's obvious that the quotient gets smaller right 
Now, if that is the case, if it's that's obvious, that's good. And if it's not obvious, you can verify this using either algebra or calculus. When you use calculus to prove that bn here is decreasing automatically, you can show that the related function, which means you replace the n here by x, you get a function, and you show that function has duality less than zero automatically. When the duality is negative, the function is decreasing. So we show that the function is decreasing automatically. If both this condition and this condition are satisfied, then the alternating series test says that the series, this series here, converges. Now we're going to talk about estimation of the remainder. A1 plus A2 plus all the way to An plus An plus 1 plus keep on going. Now that's the series. The n parcel sum is the sum of the turn up to when the index here is n. So that's Sn. So a1 plus all the way to an, that's the n parcel sum. Rn here is this whole series. Chop away this Sn. So take away this. Rn, the first turn in Rn, which is the remainder, is a n plus one because you chop this one away so r n start with a n plus one this r n here sometimes we call it remainder sometimes we call that the error the reason for that is suppose this series here converge and the sum here is s then if you use this n parcel sum to approximate this s then the difference between the exact sum and this approximation is this error. So it's a we, the remainder and also called the error. As you can see from this picture, Rn is the exact sum S subtracting the n parcel sum Sn. Now let's discover some pattern. Now, if we have an alternating series, suppose it starts with a positive turn B1 and then um, alternate. So minus B2 plus B3 minus B4, etc. Uh, notice that all this B and here, we assume that they are positive. If we satisfy these two conditions, number one, Bn go to zero as n go to infinity. Number two, Bn plus one less than or equal to Bn. Then let's look at the, the absolute value of the remainder. Let's look at the absolute value of R1, which means you take the excess sum, subtracting the first parcel sum. The absolute value of this, well, let's look at the picture. So say this alternating series, remember, it go back and forth, back and forth, this n parcel sum eventually is going to approach to a finite number, say s, because it satisfies these two conditions. So it go b1 and then minus b2 plus b3 and bouncing back and forth like when you play ping pong. And then eventually it's going to approach to a finite number s, that's the excess sum. Let's look at s minus s1. s1 is just the sum of the first chain, so it's b1. s minus s1, the absolute value of that is the difference between, is the distance between s and s1. Let's compare this distance from s to S1, which is from here to here, compare this with B2. Well, because when you bounce back, you will be here, and this is going to be, the S here is not going to go over the edge of the, the N. So it go 
bouncing back and forth, bouncing back and forth, it's going to drop somewhere between all this, all this end over here. So therefore, S minus S1, the distance between S and S1, comparing to B2, is going to be smaller than or equal to. So that's smaller than or equal to B2. Now let's look at the absolute value of R2. R2 is S minus S2. The magnitude of S minus S2, S here, minus S2. Now remember B1 and then subtract B2, that's S2. That's the sum of the first two terms. So you go to the right because B1 is positive. And then B2 is negative. So subtract B2, you go backward. Sum of these two terms, then you're going to end up with this number here. This is S2. The distance between S and S2, which is from here to here, comparing to B3, B3 is larger than or equal to this distance. Now, continue in this pattern, we can see that the absolute value of Rn is less than or equal to B of n plus 1. So the remainder or the error, the absolute value is less than or equal to B. The remainder or error, Rn, the absolute value is less than or equal to B n plus 1. So now go back to look at this. So which means this Rn, the magnitude of it, the absolute value of it, is less than or equal to the absolute value of the leading chain in this remainder. The leading chain in this remainder. So the way that you remember this is for alternating series that satisfy these two condition, the absolute value of the remainder actually is going to be dominating by the absolute value of the first thing in the remainder. The absolute value of this is less than the absolute value of the first chain in the remainder. So this is what it says. So here is a way to state this formally. So it says that if this alternating series converts to S, equal to S, is sum to S, where Bn is Bn are positive and Bn satisfy these two conditions, then the absolute value of the remainder is going to be less than or equal to this is going to be the absolute value of the first chain in the remainder. Notice the index here. This is Rn. This index here is n. This here is n plus 1. The first chain in the remainder Rn is actually at the index n plus 1. Now let's try to use some example to explain this. Uh, we look at this series here. This is an alternating series. If I write this out chain by chain, you have this. Notice that by definition, zero factorial is equal to one. We want to find the sum correct to three decimal places. Now we have, this is an alternating series. This is an alternating side. This part here is always positive. So we're going to let Bn to be this part right here. Bn equal to one over n factorial. When n goes to infinity, it is clear that that is going to go to zero. The denominator goes to infinity, numerator stays as one, so it goes to zero. Second part, we're going to check if bn plus one less than or equal to bn. This is bn plus one. We place n here by n plus one. You have this. And this is bn. Well, it's clear that this is less than or equal to this because this one here has larger denominator, right? And the numerator both are one. So we know that this alternating series converge by alternating series test. Notice here it says find the sum correct to three decimal places. Now, what does it mean? That means you want the Absolute value of the error is less than 0 0.0005. Notice that this is the third decimal places here, zero. 
If the error is less than this, you add or subtract a number less than this, it's not going to affect this third decimal place. So it's not going to change the digit here at this third decimal place. So you want the absolute value of the error less than 0 0.0005. So you want this to be correct to three decimal places. You want the error to be less than 0 0.0005. The reason for that is adding or subtracting a number less than 0 0.0005 is not going to change this digit here at the third decimal place. And the alternating series estimation theme we just talked about above here says that the absolute value of the error or the remainder is less than or equal to the absolute value of the leading chain in the remainder. So now we write out the series why are the first couple chains? So we have the first few chain of the series. Now we want the error to be less than 0 0.005. Then all we have to do is to look at which turn is less than 0 0.005. So I go down the list. I discover the first turn the absolute value that is less than 0 0.0005 is this one. This one here is actually less than 0 0.0002. So that's the first one we found is the absolute value is less than 0 0.005. So therefore, we will take the parcel sum of all the train before this one, and this, the index go from zero to six. Okay, and we call this as six. We sum them up. Use a calculator, you can get this as about 0.368056. And if we use this number, this as six, the six parcel sum to approximate the sum for the whole series, and that sum here, uh, let's call that S. So if we use this to approximate the excess sum, then we know that the error is going to be less than the absolute value of this leading chain in the remainder, which is 1 over 7 factorial, which is B7. And that is less than 0 0.0002. So definitely is going to be less than 0 0.0005. Now let's see if the error here is less than 0 0.0002, what happened? So this is S6. Now here you subtract this. So when you subtract that, you see that the this is 8 and this becomes 7. However, because this digit here is 5 and up, so you're going to round this up. This digit here is going to become 8 again. So the excess sum, we can approximate that as about 0.368. And that should be correct up to three decimal places. So again, if you want the error to be correct to three decimal places, you want to find the error to be less than 0 0.0005. So you find the first turn that has the absolute value here less than this number. And in this case, we find that this is B7. So therefore, we just sum all the turn here before this one and use the sum for those turn to approximate the excess sum. So we get is the excess sum is about 0.368. And this is should be correct to three decimal places.
Next example, we're going to approximate the sum of this series correct to four decimal places. Again, this is an alternating series. This is the alternating side. This is the alternating side. And this, let's call this part here, the blue part that we circle, let's call it BN. BN is always positive. Let's check the two condition. As n go to infinity, does this go to zero? Well, it might not be obvious in the beginning. However, let's think about replacing the n here by x. Then we have a limit of this tie infinity over infinity. And we can apply L'Hopital's rule for this. And we got 2x over the dual tier 10 to the x is 10 to the x times L end of 10. Again, this is the type infinity over infinity type, this kind of indeterminate limit. Then apply L'Hopital's rule one more time. Differentiate this, we get 2. Differentiate that, we get 10 to the x times ln of 10 to the second power. As x go to infinity, the denominator stays the same as 2. The numerator go to infinity. So that limit here will be 0. Now because this sequence here is related to this function, the function go to 0, then the sequence will also go to 0. So that will go to 0. Now we check the second condition, bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn. We can verify this by algebra. Okay, here uh, we cross multiply. So 10 to the n times n plus 1 square is less than or equal to 10 to the n plus 1 times n square. And then we can notice that the inequality side doesn't switch because you multiply both sides by the by a positive quantity, inequality side doesn't switch. And then now we divide both sides by 10 to the n and we end up with this. We can expand this perfect square as n squared plus 2n plus 1. And we subtract n squared on both sides, subtract 2n, subtract 1 on both sides. We get 9n squared minus 2n minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Now notice that if you actually graph this, and if you replace n here by x, you graph this quadratic function, we get a parabola open upward, then the x-intercept will be here and here, this x-intercept here is about 0.5. This is even smaller than 0.5. So, and 1 is y here. So you see that when n is greater than equal to 1, then the function value will be positive. So you have this greater than equal to 0 for all n greater than equal to 1. Then you can go backward. If this is true, then this is true, then this is true, then this is true, then this one here is true. So we just prove that bn plus 1 less than or equal to bn. This is how you prove this by algebra. Now, we want to approximate the sum of the series correct to four decimal places, which means we want the absolute value of the error less than point. 0, 0, 0, 0, 5, which is 5 times 10 to the negative fifth power. So if you want it to be correct to four decimal places, then this exponent here will be negative fifth. For the reasons above, we know that if the absolute value of the error is less than this number, then it's not going to change the digit on the four decimal place. Now, one way to do that is by inspection. So you list out the first couple turns of this series, and you go down the list 
and you find the first one that is less than this number. Now, if I go down, I see this one, would that be? Well, let's take a look. This is about, this is equal to 0 0.00025, which is not less than this. But this one over here is actually less than that. So this is the first twin. The absolute value is less than 0 0.00005. So now we can take the sum of all the trends that's before this trend. So sum them up. Um, let's call this S5. The index go from 1 to 5. Let's call it S5. And we got this number. Another way to find this trend, uh, instead of go down and look at the first trend that is less than this, you can try to solve bn less than 5 times 10 to the negative fifth power. So you want to see what, what will be the trend that is less than this number. We know bn is n squared over 10 to the n. And if you use a graphing calculator, you find that the smallest value that satisfies this inequality is n equal to 6. So when the index n be 6, then bn here is less than 5 times 10 to the negative fifth power. So now we can use this S5 to approximate the excess sum. The fifth partial sum S5 is good enough because we know that the error is less than 0.00005. So we can say the excess sum is about 0.067. And now since this digit here is 5, we're going to round this digit up. So it becomes 7. So we say the excess sum is about 0.0677. And this should be correct to four decimal places.